Blade Runner is one of the seminal science fiction films of the 20th century, and I think it will be important and valid through the 21st century because it resonates with core human feelings about technology, human values, the whole idea of what constitutes the importance of human life. Ridley Scott created a film under great duress, I must add, that resonates across the whole spectrum of technology, social interaction, and the fate of getting better and better at particularly biochemical, biomechanical technique. Where does our technology take us when we can start to play God and duplicate ourselves as an artificial construct? That's a very powerful idea to play with in a dramatic setting. We're already duplicating the genomes to make a uh, one cell creature. That science is accelerating also at its own logarithmic rate. And I think we will be able to create artificial humans. But like Blade Runner, the question becomes, if you create something deliberately, do you have the right to get rid of it when you don't want it anymore? Is it an appliance? Is it a human soul? Is it a being? How do you treat that, that crossover? And that was the core issue of Philip K. Dick's uh, book. How are we going to go from A to B? What will we be driving? That's an interesting question because you have the whole idea of automobiles, privately owned or leased. You have the idea of four wheels, three wheels, gyroscopically balanced, two wheels in tandem. All these formats are valid formats for land transportation. We're now in the 21st century, eight years in. We already have at our disposal some pretty amazing technologies. And we're going to keep, technology tends to build on itself in a not quite uh, logarithmic scale. If you have two things, you can add a third, and you suddenly have five. So it goes on and on, and it speeds up. And more importantly, because it's logarithmic, the speed up speeds up. It's very difficult to predict the future because all these technologies start to grow together and cross-reference each other. So what's driving the future is the human intellect, the more and more uh, assistance that we get from computer codes and computer technology. And with half the world's population living in cities, you have more and more enclosed architectural complexes. So you have speed walks, elevators, ramps, escalators, and the world's transportation will gradually evolve to being a personal mobility idea rather than a machine that you get into and go somewhere. Imagination is essentially memory. It's recording and memorizing what you've seen so you have experience. And imagination is the creation of, of putting elements together, whatever the idea is, in different combinations. This is true whether you're writing music, writing mathematical code, writing new formula. It's, it's a process of arranging knowledge into new formats. That's imagination. Here's, here's the core thing of creativity. You have to be three people. You have to be the person who's creating the idea, solving the problem. You have to be the, the person that is a technician to solve the problem in a technical or a format that's usable. And you have to be a third person who is off stage watching those other two do what they do. If you can't detach yourself from what you're doing as a as sort of a surveillance um, uh, Uber mentality, you're not going to do good work because you get too fascinated with what you're doing. And that's the, the, the mistake. Hubris kills. If you hark back to the 50s, the 60s, we were going to have cross-country highways at 200 miles an hour, driver, uh, driverless cars. The future did come true in little bits and pieces as consumer items. 
but what drives the future really is the advancing technology based on previous technology. And it's very difficult to predict anything at this point in time past about 2025 or 35 because at that point it gets too far into the future. I think what drives the future is the quest of human intellect wanting to investigate the curiosity and wanting solution to unanswered questions. I'm optimistic about the future because we have more people working on problems today than ever before.